Welcome to the Serious Shift Blogcast. We have only one question. What does Serious Shift mean to you? To answer that and much more, here's your host, Dennis Mosley-Williams. Hi, I'm Dennis, and welcome back one more time to the Serious Shift Blogcast, episode 98. It's delightful to have your attention today. Thank you. Wherever you are, I hope you're well. I hope you're working from home. I hope you're washing your hands and assisting in the flattening of the curve. We're in this together, everybody. We'll get out of it together, too. My question for you today is this. Are you a leader? Are you leading people out of this crisis, or are you a manager? Are you trying to manage the crisis? If you're the latter, I'm trying to manage the crisis, let me do you and everybody who listens to you a favor. Shh, nobody wants to hear from you right now. Nobody wanted to hear from you three weeks ago either, by the way. But especially today, manager, you're not helping. Leader or manager? Now, before we delve into that, we're gonna, I want to share some perspective with you. And my hope is you're going you're gonna to think about this. You're going to think to yourself, maybe, hey, you know what? I've been thinking about that. Good. Now, go and tell everybody you care about and you're responsible for. Share this perspective. Today, it could be a gift somebody needs. Here it is, a little peek into my home. So like you, there have been a lot of family chats lately, a lot of talking about how interesting this all is and did you ever think and here we are and speculating as to where we're going to go. Wherever that all is, everybody, it's together and I'm confident it's to a better place, okay? But nevertheless, one of the things that came up here at, you know, Casa Cowley is we were talking about how silly everything we were thinking about three weeks ago now seems. You know, the frivolous little things you're interested in? Like, can you imagine if you could roll your, well, you could, I suppose, but imagine just seeing right now a list of everything you were looking at in your browser three weeks ago. Like, I'll admit to you, like, somewhere in the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking about spending a little bit of money at my cabin this summer. I was looking at holidays and ski trips and cat skiing and all kinds of weird things. And in my own, you know, rationalization mechanism, I was probably telling myself things like, geez, you know, I'm pretty happy, but if I could just get a couple of these extra things, I'd be even happier. And then one day I wake up, just like you did, and it's all taken away. It's all gone. Three weeks ago, I had all kinds of stuff, and I wanted a little bit more. Thankfully, I'm, as, I'm less plagued by this than a lot of you. But just the same, there were things I wanted, right? Three weeks later, now that my you know civilization's flipped its desk here... If you right now just gave me and you everything we had three weeks ago, we wouldn't want another thing. Three weeks ago, everything we had was somehow not enough. But today, oh my goodness, the coronavirus and the rest of it. The Prime Minister of Canada today saying enough is enough. Go home and stay there, right? Everything's unfamiliar. Suddenly today, the magic wand promise of what if I could just put it all back to what it was three weeks ago? Everybody would take that deal. And in there, there lies a lesson about needs and wants, happiness and grateful, and how sometimes you don't know what you got until it's gone, okay? So that's just something to share with everybody. Hey, th this, isn't a ter this isn't terrible, it's not the end of the world, but look how lovely it all was. Weren't, what did we have? And we will have again. Next time, don't take it for granted. Next time, let's all get off the junk of wishing it was just a little bit better or just a little bit more, okay? If we could have back everything that was taken from us three weeks ago, we'd be happy. We wouldn't dare ask for anything else. That's where we should have been three weeks ago too. A lot of people's happiness is tied to more. And sometimes more isn't better, just better is better, okay? Now let's get to this question. That little perspective, feel free, as I say, to share it with the people you love. Now let's get to this question. You leading people? Or are you managing? I am leading. Okay, I'm leading my people. I'm telling them what to do, what to think, what to say, and I'm sharing perspective. I am confidently pointing to a brighter future. You got to do the same thing. Let's talk about managers and leaders. Leaders. I've worked for a couple, but one comes to mind right now. Fred Reimers, major. Major Fred Reimers, oh my goodness, currently living in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Oh my God, that guy wanted me to, he made me want to stand taller. I wanted to be like him, <laughs> okay? He made me better. He inspired me and he was incredible. Everything good that I do as a leader, I stole out of that guy's playbook. The guy's fantastic. 
You know the greatest thing that they say about a manager? He stayed out of my way. They say of a leader, person made me better. I miss her. I want to be her. What do we say about managers? Yeah, not a bad guy to work for. He stayed out of my way. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Managers. They take... Their entire objective is to achieve whatever they achieved last year quicker and easier than they did the year before. That's what they do. Leaders don't. They bring us somewhere new. We're coming out of rubble, everybody. Three weeks ago, we had everything and wanted more. We've had this amazing market correction. We have this, this uh, unknown enemy, this virus. We're scrambling to get in front of it. Okay, great. We're all working together, which is nice to see, right? There's no borders right now. This is a problem for everybody. Everybody's scientific and health community is working together. It's great, okay? We're gonna weather this together. Now leaders, where are we going next? How are we all, how are you gonna make sure that your people are better when it's over? That they're even gonna say, this is, you know what? I went through it and it was miserable, but this is how I came out better. That's what a leader would be thinking about. A manager, not a chance. They're thinking about maintaining and protecting the status quo. Right now, they want everything to go back to where it was three weeks ago, and I don't. I want it to go ahead to something better than it was three weeks ago. Let's go. Managers maintain. They protect. They are champions of policies that make no sense, ideas that make no sense, and actions that make no sense. That's what managers do. And they promote people that'll tow that line even though they know that it's ridiculous. Leaders, on the other hand, they're not champions of bad ideas or policies or whatever is working. Leaders expect everything to end. They expect whatever's working now to not work later. So they're always thinking about what comes next. We're not going back to the same place. We're going ahead to someplace better. Lead them. Okay? Leaders figure out ways to encourage people to constantly think about innovating. Managers? No, it's the opposite. They're constantly finding evidence and solutions that justify continuing to do what we did in the past. Everything you did in the past isn't enough or right anymore. Knowing what you know now, can you imagine what you would have said to everybody four, five, and six weeks ago? How different your messaging would have been? Well, your messaging has to be different now. You're leading them, okay? Managers, they look for familiarity. They look for manuals. They look for predictability. Leaders don't. Leaders assume there is no manual. Leaders assume that if there is a manual, it's out of date and not worth looking at. That's what leaders do. Leaders are about people. Leaders are about trust and connection. Okay, managers believe that people can be replaced. I don't. People can't be replaced. No, people need to be inspired. They are a part of the solution. They are the solution. Leaders are embraced. Managers are endured, right? The good news is managers can become leaders. Leaders can never become managers. But managers can ascend and become a leader. So here we are. Got an unprecedented weirdness going on in most of our lives. What do your clients need? They need perspective. Okay? They need to be reminded. They need to be refocused and re-educated. That's what they need. And they're looking to leaders to do it. Okay, ask yourself, where are you bringing your people? Are you managing this cat catastrophe or are you leading through it? Are you pointing to the future? Are you providing insight, action, perspective? That's what they're looking for. Begin with the end in mind. When this thing is a distant memory, what do you want your clients and your people to remember about this event, specifically you? And I'm going to tell you right now, what you want them to remember is that you led not that you managed. Nobody needs a manager. Oh my goodness. They didn't then, they don't now. Everybody, I'm going to continue to post my blog twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. But for those of you who are interested, keep an eye on my LinkedIn profile as well. I'm posting a lot of video content there that won't be going out in the blog. So just for those of you in the know. Everyone, thank you so very much. It's always wonderful to have your attention, especially now. Thanks, be well, and reach out to me anytime. I'm here to talk to you. I'd love to help. Take care. We hope you enjoyed the Serious Shift blogcast. We would love any suggestions, feedback on topics, ideas, or challenges that may have you feeling stuck. Also, please leave a five-star review wherever you are enjoying this content. It helps Dennis out tremendously. On behalf of Dennis and the team, 
See you next episode.